Hey everyone, I'm Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and uh, I'm in a slightly different surrounding here. I'm actually in my hotel room at, um, well, I've been at Gamescom Cologne. So I wanted to talk about the NVIDIA event that actually now happened yesterday. Now we did actually publish out a video and we kind of wanted to get it out as soon as possible. So we did kind of skirt around maybe a few issues, didn't really go too much into it. So now I'm sitting in front of my laptop and we're gonna go for it step by step. So firstly, I wanna start with the event. Overall, I'd say the event was a bit of a success. It was obviously revolutionary for them to bring out a new product and for the most part, probably, you know, stuck with kind of what everyone was expecting. Now, there were maybe a few hiccups in terms of like the timing of the event when it was meant to start, maybe a bit of sort of organizational issues, but I am aware that Nvidia um, pretty much, you know, know about this and hopefully they're gonna try and avoid it in the future. Now, the delay was probably the biggest problem because what that actually meant was uh, the NVIDIA landing pages across sort of globally, so the UK, the US, actually launched at a specific time. I'm guessing it was all kind of set so that everything timed in nicely, but where there was a delay with the event, it kind of means that all the launch pricing kind of came out before Jensen had even well, announced it himself. So we will get into the pricing in a little bit, but um, yeah, it's just kind of a, a sad thing that that kind of happened, but you know, these things do happen and sometimes it's out of uh, people's control. Overall though, yeah, I think it was a, a great success sort of announcing things. There's a few little issues that I was a bit kind of, that's a bit deceiver, sort of a bit deceiving and a bit kind of, you know, mischievous how they've done it. So I will mention on that as well. Uh, first thing, obviously pre-orders, you can now pre-order it. So you can go on to nvidia.com, whether you're in the UK, the US or wherever you are, and you can pre-order but bearing in mind that is only on the 2080 and the 2080 ti no word on the 2070 yet but based on the rumor mill we're kind of expecting that around probably october time but you know rumors are rumors so take it with a pinch of salt now there was one thing that i guess i wasn't overly keen on and that's the whole kind of pricing issue so you know we saw things like uh, prices from 499 699 and so forth and 999 now, that is obviously for kind of your reference models, but then you have your founders editions. And when you go onto the NVIDIA website, like I've got in front of me, I'm, uh, I'm actually seeing it, you know, on .com for the 2070 at 599, the 2080 at 799, and the 2080 Ti at uh, 1,199. These are all in dollars. In pounds, it's 569, 749, and 1,099. So I think it's a bit mischievous that this kind of saying, you know, the price comes from this point to this point to this point, but then you can't actually buy those particular models. You're kind of forced to buy the founder's edition. So I think maybe they could have dealt with that a little bit better um, and in a way kind of misleading the public only to a certain degree. So it's not a, a great deal because a lot of people are probably gonna go out and buy the founder's editions for um, the likes of kind of custom water cool blocks and things like that, which we will go into as well but there's also the element of most people are probably gonna go out and buy an AIB, so an Azus Strix, MSI Trio X, and we will go through the EVGA stuff in a minute as well. So there are sort of, you know, um, I guess different ways to look at it, depending on who you are, what you're gonna be buying. Uh, so obviously there were some game previews at the event as well. So this included the likes of the new Tomb Raider, uh, new Metro and Battlefield 5. Now, <laughs> for me personally, when I saw the Tomb Raider, I was like, wow, I'm blown away, this is amazing. And then they showed the Metro trailer. And I was like, wow, like Tomb Raider doesn't look as good as what I thought it did now. Metro looks amazing. And then Battlefield 5 literally blew them both out of the water. Uh, EA and DICE, have, uh, you know, coupled with Nvidia have just made something, I don't know, that really you could only expect in your wildest dreams. It just looked absolutely fantastic. And a lot of that came down to ray tracing. So the way that um, kind of you were getting reflections and reflection, uh, refractions, I mean, the way that that was done and the thing that I was kind of, you know, really sort of, you know, wowed about was when you look at the reflections you were getting were actually reflections from something that wasn't even on the screen. So it's kind of reflections from something that was behind, um, something bouncing off of something else that's bouncing off of something else. Obviously, we all know about ray tracing and the, the whole kind of idea behind it and how it's been implemented into uh, kind of, you know, rendering and 3D modeling. But now it's actually coming to the consumer graphics market for those who are interested in uh, gaming now. So this is kind of a really big leap forward, but there are some few a few caveats with that as well. Obviously, there's hardly any games that can actually uh, utilize ray tracing at the moment. And Nvidia did announce that I think there was about 20, 21 titles that are gonna be coming out. But I guess it's that whole chicken and the egg thing, you know, I mean, you can't expect people to, in terms of game developers, you can't expect them to kind of 
implement uh, the functionality before the functionality is there. So it's a matter of obviously this will kind of change over time and we will expect new games to come out and more games to come out that are utilizing ray, ray tracing and RTX technology, but obviously the hardware had to be there first. So there's that element of it. Um, one thing kind of sticking with the ray tracing and the RTX side of things was when Jensen announced that the 2070 performance was going to be, um, I think you either said equivalent or possibly even better than Titan XP. Um, I don't think, when he first announced it, I don't even think he said XP, I think he said versus Titan X. But then we're talking which one, are we talking big P, little P, which model of Titan are, are we talking about? So I think there was some clarification after, I'm trying to remember back to yesterday when I was at the event. Obviously there was so much going on, we were live tweeting it and sticking it on social media, I'm sure everyone followed along with that. But I still think there's a little bit of a grey area there in terms of... Um, I think personally, and speaking to a lot of other media as well, that the performance that's going to be better than Titan XP is with RTX. So when you take RTX away, I can't see in my eyes that a 2070 is going to be better performance than a Titan XP. So there's a big issue there, I guess, and that's gonna come down to us as reviewers to essentially you know, do all the benchmarks, do the testing, and actually show what it's like RTX enabled, RTX disabled, and kind of see the difference between the two. But that's just my initial thoughts on the matter. Um, performance in general, we didn't really get to see anything. Um, we actually went backstage after and uh, we was even told when we were trying to film some of the games that were going on, which was people playing some of the games that had been announced, uh, we was actually told not to film the screens. Um, don't know why, I don't think it was showing any performance figures, but that's what we were told by uh, some of the staff. So yeah, that made it a little bit tricky. Obviously, other than that, we didn't really see anything. It didn't say that, oh, it's X times faster than the previous gen, uh, or even compared to AMD or anything like that. So everything is really tight-lipped. Even going around Gamescom today, we went to uh, the Case King booth where EVGA had some stuff, and they had all of their 2080 and 2080 Ti stuff, but they had a system, but it only had a 1080 Ti on it. And it was literally showing a little slideshow kind of video of um, the functionality of their new cards with their new coolers, but they wasn't allowed to put a 2080 or a 2080 Ti in that system because um, they've been basically told that, uh, yeah, they, they can't have a system on the show floor with the card in there running. If it wasn't running, I'm sure it'd be fine. But yeah, so there's there's kind of that element. Uh, before I kind of continue with the EVGA stuff, I want to talk about the leaks because I know that Jensen kind of discussed through a lot of the leak stuff and the information that was going out there. We leaked a lot. There was stuff that was uh, kind of, you know, on video cards and other websites out there. And for the most part, I guess most of it was actually true. We, we kind of found out how much memory and some of the full specs of the cards and things like that. And we found out, yeah, memory, memory bandwidth uh, and so forth. And yeah, it seems like the leaks were pretty much spot on. Obviously, the initial leak said that it was going to be called 1180 and 1180 Ti, so that was completely wrong. But again, Jensen had a little joke about that, so it was quite quite funny as a, a member of the press to kind of, you know, appreciate him kind of getting down to earth with it. So there was that. Uh, talking about sort of EVGA, so like I said, we went to the Case King booth at Gamescom and EVGA had some cards on show. So they had a 2080 uh, in terms of a dual fan design. They also had a 2080 with the FTW3 cooler and then they also had a 2080 Ti. Um, obviously there's so many different models that EVGA are bringing out. From what I know at initial launch, there's going to be at least three SKUs per GPU. So for 2080 Ti, there's going to be three. There's going to be three for 2080. So we're talking obviously dual fan, triple fan. Uh, we're talking uh, blower style design as well, because obviously they will kind of have their own blower style design for those who just want something um, that kind of does the job, doesn't need the extra cooler, don't want to spend the extra money on it, that kind of thing. Maybe even for like professionals in the workstation kind of area. So there is that. Obviously over time we are going to see the likes of Hydro Copper and we also, also are going to see uh, Kingpin. So I know Vince at the moment is working on a Kingpin edition. Obviously that's going to involve uh, pre-binning stuff and um, seeing how far it can be pushed, yada yada yada. Uh, in terms of the Hydro Copper, we have been told that they have developed that from the ground up. Um, so it's not kind of, you know, like the last generation of stuff that we've seen with a lot of GPU uh, add-in board partners where they kind of take the cooler and just strap it on. EVGA have done this in the past and we called them out on it. Um, so the, I think it was the 1070 that they did it from uh, with the previous gen to 1070. So they've actually told us that they will be developing a whole new cooler from the ground up essentially for uh, for this. So Hydro Copper is going to be really cool. Really looking forward to that and getting this underwater. 
Um, the other cool thing with the EVGA stuff is the customization. Obviously, if you remember with the FTW3, we could kind of, you know, change the shroud and you could get the white ones and change it to like an adamantium looking one. So really cool stuff. They've kind of moved on one, uh, one phase more with this. So you can actually change certain areas of the cooler and then you can get kind of this cover that goes over it as well and the actual cooler itself is made out of like a, a toughened durable polycarbonate so really cool kind of design there and uh, also they've implemented other features including ICX2 where you can monitor the graphics card in all uh, sort of aspects of the card in terms of thermal dynamics and things like that giving you kind of full control and the precision uh, software that they're bringing out and um, that's going to be updated looks absolutely fantastic. Going back to kind of water cooling, we also published some pictures earlier on today uh, where we saw uh, EK actually come in again at the Case King booth and they had uh, the nickel um, kind of, uh, I guess, clear or polycarbonate or acrylic. I can't actually remember what they use as the clear surface, but the nickel one and also the Acetel. And they had that for 2080 and 2080 Ti. So you had kind of two different SKUs for both. And they have said that they've been basically scrambling in the last couple of days getting these all ready and they will be ready to kind of ship. They should have stock and everything on the 20th when the cards are available as well. Obviously these are only for reference design at the moment, but in the future we probably see um, blocks for Strix, Trio X, uh, EVGA cards and, and so forth. And they aren't the only ones. We have seen stuff uh, leaked out now. Um, so Alpha Cool and Aqua Tuning, they've, uh, they've got their blocks ready and they're ready as far as I know to pre-order as well. So lots of kind of good stuff going on there as well. Um, so lots of other companies announcing water blocks. So that's it really. I mean, I'm pretty excited about the launch. This is probably one of the most exciting launches that's kind of coming up, uh, you know, that's happened uh, in, in this kind of industry for quite some time now. It's really gonna hopefully shake up the market. I mean, AMD, where do they go from here? I honestly don't know where they go from here. I'm pretty sure, I mean, in my eyes, AMD might be done. The only people that I can see who could compete with this is Intel. Now that they've got the likes of Raja Kaduri and Chris Hook on their team to sort of cover, you know, for the market inside of things. And I don't know, they, it's Intel. They have the budget for it. That's probably where AMD were lacking when it came to, you know, they bought out ATI and then they moved on like this. So if Nvidia really want to have some competition in the market, Intel might be the ones to do it, but we're gonna to have to wait and apparently, based on the teaser, tra uh, the teaser trailer that we saw the other day, we're probably gonna to have to wait until 2020. And being their kind of first official stab at it um, after you know, the last time, um, is it gonna be the best first, first time out? Probably not. Five years after that, maybe we'll have another player in the market. So there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I just wanted to go a little bit more into detail, show off uh, obviously some of the stuff that we saw today. And we have got full videos of this stuff as well. So we've got a full video where I was at the EVGA side of things, at the Case King booth. And then another video uh, where we kind of, you know, looked more into the EK stuff. We have also got essentially, I guess, a full booth tour of, uh, of Case King. And uh, you can see that in another video as well. So please check all them out. And obviously there is a lot more coverage from Gamescom in Cologne. 2018. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. You know what to do. Comment below. Are you going to be getting one of these cards? Are you going to custom loop it with a, with a custom water block? Let us know. Hit that uh, like button and uh, I'll see you in the next video. See you later.